Hey everyone, it's Troy Fish Slimbacker. I hope you've had a great spring and been catching a ton of saw guys. I know it's been a pretty crazy one with the way the weather conditions are. Who would think we're here in central Ohio in mid-May almost and the water is barely hit 60 degrees. It was one of the longest spawns that I can ever remember for saw guy. But I've got a lot of guys asking me questions now. Hey, Troy, we're, we're getting out of the spawn. It's post-spawn and transition time towards summer. What do I need to do? What should I be using? Well, my question to them is always, do you think small for saw guys at this time? If you don't, you're missing the boat. Right now, starting now through all the way into the 1st of July, the power of a small bait will catch you a ton more saw guys. What do I mean? Well, let me use an example of some of the things that I do and I've found that work great in this time of the year, all the way in as the water starts warming. And that is, I love to take a 2.3 swim bait, or if not a swim bait, this is a nasty Nate newer style kind of beaver tail that's all split. This thing is fantastic on a road runner. Or if you want to be traditional, just a tube jig on a road runner, or even just a twister tail. Do you notice everything that I showed you is what? Small. Why is that? Well, let's think about this. If you're Mr. Saw Guy and you got to eat shad most of the time all your life, it's kind of like the springtime comes. And if you're a mushroom guy, do you love morel mushrooms? I know I do. So every opportunity I get to find some of those and eat them, I'm going to eat them because they don't last, but what? For a short season. Well, the saw guys know that they can get their little delicacies this time of year. And that is what? It's the hatching of all the different other fish from crappies, from bluegills to bass of their fry. Now, how many of you, this time of year, you're going into a bay or in the shoreline of your lake and you see shore minnows just skipping out of the water? Just flying out of the water all over the place. What do you do? Do you quickly stop and go to that area and start casting where you see those minnows? If you're not, I'm telling you right now, start doing it. I don't care if the water's eight inches deep. There's saw guys usually in there that is doing that. If it's not them, it's going to be maybe some bass. How do you find out? Well, again, the power of small will do the trick for you. What I love to do is take a road runner, typically an eighth ounce road runner. I'll use 16th ounces sometimes as well. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about that. I did that today and pounded saw guys. But I'll take an eighth ounce and I'll, I'll I love, and everybody knows I'm Big Joshy. This is a 2.3 Big Joshy swim bait. Been proven over many, many years this time of year to be deadly up into the to the warmer parts of the water of July. But what do we do with this? Well, first of all, right now, the fish are coming into that transition. What I like to do is start following the wind. A lot of people know I'm in central Ohio. We have a shallow, we have some shallow lakes. They have channels, that have bridges. They have uh, different places where current from wind push is created. So I love to take these swim baits and these road runners and find those current areas that create slack or slicks. Maybe it's a little piece of a rock jetty that sticks out and the wind pushes. What do you usually find on the back side? A slack area. A lot of times bait gets pushed into there and stays there to be out of the main current. Well, guess what? The saw guys will be right there for them. So what we're doing is we're imitating the small fry and hatch of these other fish that the saw guys are now looking for. And if you think I'm wrong about this, there's been studies proven. They can even show you one from a Hoover Reservoir where they actually transmitted a certain amount of saw guys and put them through the spring all the way through summer into fall and followed their tracks and where they went. 
And what's interesting about that is when springtime came, they pulled away from the shed. They left the shed. They actually started going in, into the coves and the bays and the channels, into the spawn areas of their lakes. And what were they doing? They were sitting there eating those morel mushrooms, those delicacies that I was talking about. Yes, they were gobbling up crappie, gobbling up gills, anything they could find, the shore minnows that we talked about. So by taking something small, putting it on a road runner with a little flash, you start to imitate that same thing they're looking for and they can't resist it. So how can we up that game even more? Well, usually about this time, we also know the scent and taste of night crawlers comes into play, doesn't it? So what I like to do, and guys that are, have seen my seminars before, we'll take night crawler and we'll get some of those the night before we're gonna go fishing or the day before, and we'll rinse them and we'll get them clean. And then we'll take scissors and we just cut them in chunks about a half inch. And then what you do when you go out, put that in a baggie, put it in a cooler, keep them cool and fresh, reach in, grab a chunk of night crawler, take your road runner, your swim or twister tail, whatever it is you're using, tip it on that hook. Just a small piece. Don't overdo it. You just waste your night crawler. It doesn't take hardly any. And then take these and go into those flats, that two to five feet flat or in a cove along the shorelines where it gradually tapers down into deeper water. Start throwing these, sinking them to the bottom. They hit the bottom, now just start slow dragging them, hopping them, making just a little flash. Not quick, just kind of move them along. What you're going to find is these saw guys will just suck this whole bait in and start swimming away. And I'm not talking just your little 12 to 15 to 17 inch fish. Guys, we, we just look forward to June to hit, from June to July, to go in these flats and in these bays. We're catching 19 to 25 inch fish. I got guys drifting crawlers, doing crawler harnesses, doing different things like that, and they're not having the success that we have many times doing this. So if you want to think of how you can up your game with saw guys in the spring, after post-spawn, and into the summer, again, don't think large, think small. Add a night crawler to it and up your game by 200%. Take these out on your main points of the lake, main flats, anywhere like that that has a drop off close and start working these and dragging them as, we, as I had mentioned with that little piece of crawler and see if you don't catch more saw guys. So I hope this is a tip that can help you, and I know it will because it does for me as well as many around Central Ohio. The power of a 2.3 swim bait and a road runner is off the chart, and it will be for a good part of summer. So I hope this helps you. If you get the opportunity and you try it and it works, send me some pics. Let me see. Send them to me or send them to Big Joshy Swim Baits if you're using our swim baits. We'd love to see them. But right now's the time, guys. We are in that transition. I had mentioned that uh, I had tried that, and I'll just briefly tell you. I went today to Indian Lake, a shallow lake. We had a pretty decent south wind going on, and I took a Roadrunner on a 2.3. I was using orange soda, one more like this. But I found a wind-pushed area where it was creating an eddy or a slick on the back side of it. Guess what? There was bait in there, and the saw guys were stacked. I was catching 15 and a half to 18-inch saw guys. I caught 11 uh, keeper size, and I think it was eight shorts, and about three or four or five largemouth bass in the mix in an hour and 50 minutes. And my wife called me home. I had to leave. They were still there. They were still feeding. They just kept coming in, into that area to look for that bait. But that 2.3, I was actually using the uh, 16th ounce size, the smallest. I was using a 1 16th with an orange soda. And I would count it to two and just start slow reeling it back and just letting the blade do the work right now. And they were just inhaling it. So I hope this is a tip that can bring 
more fish to the boat or to the shore for you? I don't hope. I know. It's now up to you to get confident in the fact that you do not have to go large to catch large sawguy right now. Think small, think scent, and you're going to have a lot more saw guys hooked on, on your rod because of that. So we appreciate you listening and hope to see some of those picks from some of the fish you're catching from thinking small.